Topic 17, high level equilibrium. Topic 2 or volume 5, what is the relationship between K, the equilibrium constant, and delta G? Delta G is known as the Gibbs free energy, and that's something that will come up in topic 5. So this particular topic will be a little bit more challenging than normal, only because you don't have a great understanding of delta G. The understandings are, we need to work, be able to work out the position of equilibrium, how that has what we call a maximum entropy, which is order, and at that point it has a minimum of Gibbs free energy. The Gibbs free energy of a reaction and the equilibrium constant are both used to measure the position of equilibrium. Um, and again, topic 15 contains delta G in a bit more detail, but we're going to basically look at the equilibrium principles in this video. It might be good to check out the text ref as well. So what is the Gibbs free energy? Gibbs free energy, or delta G naught, is sometimes referred to as free energy, and it combines the three quantities of delta H, delta S, which is entropy, and the Kelvin temperature to determine if a reaction will occur spontaneously. Entropy is the order of a system, so it could be less ordered or more ordered. Think of solids being more ordered and gases being less ordered. But that will come up in detail in topic 15. A reaction with a negative delta G is said to be exogonic. This echoes the name exothermic, and exogonic reactions are spontaneous. So if we have a negative value, it's going to be a spontaneous reaction. In simple terms, the criteria for a spontaneous change is that delta G naught is less than zero. So the change in the Gibbs free energy must be less than zero. So the image on the left hand side, the roller coaster looking thing, we can see that um, the delta G is slightly less. The difference between the reactants and products is slightly less. But what will happen is because it's an equilibrium reaction, we will find the minimum of that value. So when delta G equals zero, we have an equilibrium reaction. Now, with equilibrium, we're somewhere between the reactants and the products. So in this particular reaction, the two delta Gs are very, very similar. They're, they're very, very close together, which means that the equilibrium will be somewhere between the reactants and the products. And here, delta G is approximately zero. Remember that delta G is a measure of the free energy. And if we have a delta G equal to one, our equilibrium constant is one because the concentration of products and reactants is virtually identical. Over on the right hand side, we've just got that ratio between react products and reactants. If we have a one to one ratio, we're sitting at equilibrium. The bigger the value goes, the more towards the product side, the smaller the ratio goes, the more towards the reactants. Remember that the K value can give you an indication on the extent of reaction. So the further we go to the product side, the bigger the reaction, the larger the extent. And generally we think that reactions with a high K value, they're generally the exothermic reactions and reactions with a K value less than one, they're generally our endothermic reactions. We've got to supply the energy to get the reaction to complete. So there is a relationship between delta G and K, and the two things are actually interchangeable. And there is a, in the data book, there is an equation that links delta G and K. Okay, so we need to talk about the two types of equilibrium reaction. The first one we're going to look at is equilibrium favoring the products. So the K value would be greater than one. Now that means that the Gibbs free energy must be negative. So the difference between the reactants and products, the Gibbs free energy is very great. And then the minimum entropy of the reaction would sit somewhere closer to the products. So when we work out the equilibrium, there's more products than there are reactants. So that's why we have a K value greater than one. You can think about this as being like a downhill reaction. There's a downhill slope. 
um, the delta G is going to be negative and it's going to sit more with the products. The graph on the right hand tri side tries to explain that um, in terms of exothermic and endothermic, so have a look at that as well. The position of equilibrium corresponds to the minimum free energy between the reactants and the products. In this case, that minimum free energy lies somewhere closer to the products, which is why the K value is greater than one. The delta G can be calculated from the difference between the delta G of the reactants and the delta G of the products. If we have an equilibria favoring the reactants, this is kind of like an uphill reaction. The delta G would be positive. Now when we let our ball go from side to side, we can see that the minimum value of the free energy lies closer to the reactants. The delta G is positive, the difference between the delta G of the reactants and the delta G of the products is a positive value. And that means that the K will be less than one. The minimum free energy lies closer to the reactants, which gives us a smaller K value. If we were to try and get this reaction to go in the forward direction from reactants to products, we would have to include some energy. The only way we could turn the reactants into the products is to give it energy, which is why equilibrium reactions with the K value less than one are usually equilibrium reactions. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the delta G value and the K value and try and come up with um, the relationship between the two. So they're linked together with the expression delta G equals negative RT ln K. R is the gas constant, T is the temperature, and K is the equilibrium constant. So for the first one, the ionization of water, we have a delta G of 79.9 kilojoules, a positive delta G value meaning a non-spontaneous or uphill reaction. So what do we expect the K value to be? Positive delta G means a very small K value. Here we have the formation of ammonia, the harbour process. The delta G value is negative 32.9, so that's a downhill reaction. What do we expect the K value for that one to be? Well, if delta G is negative, then K will be very big, 5.8 times 10 to the the last one, sulfur trioxide um, decomposing to sulfur dioxide, K value, uh, delta G value of 141, so we expect a really, really big K value, and in fact it's 1.4 times 10 to the 25, really, really big, uh, sorry, negative 25, really, really small K value. Okay, so we talked about the expression before, here we're just going to formalise it. Delta G equals the negative ratio, the gas constant, times the Kelvin temperature, times by the natural log of the equilibrium constant. And that can be found in the data book. Like we described before, if delta G is negative, then LNK will be a positive value, our K will be greater than 1, and the mixture will contain mostly products. If we have a delta G of zero, then LNK will be zero and K will be equal to one. And there we have equal amounts of reactants and products. It's, 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 it is in exact equilibrium. Just got that out there. If we have a positive delta G, our LNK will be negative, but our K value will be less than one and our equilibrium will line mainly towards the reactants. The equation can be used to calculate the equilibrium constant K from the standard free enthalpy of a reaction or vice versa and the IB might ask you to do either or. So here is an example where we need to calculate the equilibrium constant when we're given the free energy change of the delta G. We've been given the reaction and we're asked to find the K value. The delta G is negative 3.5 kilojoules per mole, which indicates that this is a spontaneous reaction and my K value should be greater than one. So delta G equals negative RT ln K. Let's sub in our values. Our delta G is negative 3.5 kilojoules per mole. 
equals negative the gas constant 8.31 times the Kelvin temperature 298 times ln k. Now we've got the units of kilojoules per mole and the gas constant is in joules so I need to change this to joules so I've got times 10 to the 3 to get me into joules everything else has remained the same. Now I need to transpose it to try and work out ln k. So the first thing I can do is cancel off the negatives and then do 8.31 times 298 just to get a value of 2476. Now I can isolate ln k by taking the 2476 to the other side and doing a division. And then finally I need to do the inverse operation of ln k which is e to the power of. So ln k is equal to 3.5 times 10 to the 3 over 2476 which gives me 1.41 and then the inverse operation of, K, of ln is an exponential which is e to 1.14 which gives me a k value of 4.11 so a smallish k value but lying more towards the products. Okay the top tips for volume 5 delta g is negative for a spontaneous reaction the K value and the delta G value give you an idea about the extent and you can find that formula in the data book. Thanks for watching guys, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you next time.